ASCO 2023 had three important studies in estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, one in the early setting, Natalie, looking at the adjuvant use of ribocyclic, two in the metastatic setting of importance, the um, SONIA study, looking at do we actually really need to use CDK46 uh, inhibitors in the first line metastatic setting, or can we get away with using the endocrine treatment only and then switch? And then the third study, looking at do we can we maintain CDK46 and still get benefit in the second line setting called the Palmera study. <music> Natalie's study is the last of the studies involving adjuvant CDK46, ribocyclib. Uh, this, in, this study involved approximately 5,000 patients, about 2,500 in each arm. And it was a randomization post uh, definitive treatment uh, to either ribocyclib and endocrine agent versus endocrine agent alone, together with other factors that you may have added in, such as zolandronic acid. Involved a lower risk group of patients, so T, T0 and N1, so stage two, and um, they were also about 44% of premenopausal women uh, who had to have the, uh, the GNH RH analog. So the primary endpoint was IDFS, and the uh, result on that was at three years, 3.3% difference in uh, between the two arms, highly significant with a hazard ratio of 0.74. One of the secondary endpoints was distant disease-free survival. And that was, that was a difference of 2.2% between the two arms at three years, hazard ratio 0.73. So both results highly significant. And remembering that distant de disease-free survival is hopefully a surrogate for overall survival. And there's a trend towards overall survival benefit. You could have had 12 months endocrine treatment to be randomized into this study. All groups benefit across the subgroups. Looking at um, dosing, it was 400 milligrams of ribocyclib used in this study, not the 600 that we're used to in the metastatic setting. And Amelie data from the, uh, from the metastatic setting had indicated this may be a, a useful dose, but very brave to use it and looks like it has, it has, born, it has born fruit. The toxicity was, however, still present involving cardiac toxicity, uh, QTC changes, and the other side effects that we do know from the metastatic setting. And about 19% of patients did discontinue due to adverse events. And remembering only 20% of patients in this trial have actually completed the study. 80% are still to complete. So early data, but promising data. And it offers us the hope of another CDK46 in this setting, maybe in using a different group, a lower risk group, depending on what the health economies allow us to do, and maybe a drug that can be used after another specific drug, say for a BRCA positive patient, as the entry criteria allowed a little bit more flexibility in terms of when you could start. So very promising, but probably a little longer to wait for the full data. Sonia data was presented at this ASCO, and it was a very interesting trial, as we're all used to using CDK46s in the first line setting uh, of metastatic disease. However, this looked at whether you could use endocrine treatment first versus uh, CDK46 uh, inhibitors in an endocrine treatment, and then on relapse, cross over to, um, to, from the endocrine only arm to the palbociclib arm and um, uh, the endocrine next endocrine partner versus uh, endocrine treatment. And what it showed was that there was there was a primary primary endpoint was PFS2. So PFS1 did show that actually the palbociclib containing arm was better and very similar to the pivotal trials with first line CDK46. But on PFS2, i.e. when they had switched to the endocrine alone or the palbociclib in the, in the second line setting, there was no difference. So i.e. you could, implying that you could use first line primary endocrine treatment instead of using palbociclic containing a treatment. However, there's several things about the study. Just to say it was about 500 patients in each arm. It used predominantly palbociclib. So, you know, whether this is the best agent to use we would one would question that now. So very few num very few patients were you were allowed to use any CDK46 in this in this trial, but mostly were palbociclib, very through ribociclib. And certainly the question is being asked that should you be using is ribociclib a better drug? So we it gives us some idea that perhaps 
you can use an endocrine agent only as your first line treatment for the more elderly frail patients. And you may be okay with that. But I think a lot of us have used CDK4-6s as first line and they do have fantastic response rates. And I'm not too sure how much this is going to move people away from that when you want to achieve good response, because we know they're as good as chemotherapy. And why would you not want to use a very efficient treatment to gain the response rate you need to, to, to gain for that patient? So interesting, gives us some reassurance, but I'm not sure it's going to change everybody's practice. The Palmyra study presented at ASCO this year had a very interesting question looking at whether you can give continued TDK46 after relapse and first line metastatic use. So important question. And this trial basically randomized to palbociclib after palbociclib plus the next endocrine partner versus the endocrine partner alone. And most of those were um, AI to fulvestrant. So the single endocrine partner was fulvestrant. It was 62, it was two to one randomization, 62 in one arm, 136 in the other. And the primary endpoint was PFS, investigator led PFS at six and 12 months, and there was no difference. So indicating that perhaps this isn't the best way to do this. There were some patients that did quite well, uh, and perhaps we can pull those out. But other studies indicate that perhaps we need to think about something different, perhaps switching, perhaps palbociclib. Uh, to palbociclib isn't the best way. Maybe it's better to switch to ribociclib, which was done in the maintained study. And there was a difference there. There was an improvement. So I think this shows us that um, continuation of the same CDK46 is not something that we should be doing in practice. <laughs>